Hi guys, right today I am looking at another personal stereo. Uh, this is um, the Sony Walkman WM EX610, and this one um, possibly has two faults with it, um, perhaps more, but two that I've spotted so far. So the first thing uh, is if I put a battery in here, it takes one of the slimline gumstick style batteries. There is nothing out of the player at all, so it's completely dead. But these players have um, two terminals on the end, these two here, and this was for an external um, battery um, pack. So it took a, a AA battery and clipped on the end. I don't have this, but the uh, the power from that battery just fed these two terminals here. So this is the positive, and this is the negative. And if I power this up, I've tried it with a, my external power supply, I put one and a half volts onto these two terminals, the, the player does work. So it looks like it's the battery uh, compartment or the battery terminals or something that's, uh, that's not working. There may be a fuse in here on the battery um, side, which um, I don't know until I open it up. Um, so there's that. Now, when I did power it up from the power supply, I also noticed that the uh, the drive mechanism wasn't turning. I could hear the motor, so it's the old uh, problem where the belt has deteriorated over time. So I do have a new belt um, for this one. So hopefully we can uh, sort out both of those issues and uh, have a look and see if there's anything else wrong with it. So let's uh, let's get into it. Right, so looking around the case, let's have a look. So this back panel needs to come off by the look of it to get access to that belt. So there's two screws on the case there. Another two here and one here. So let's start with those. Again, I, I don't have a service manual for this, but um, they're normally, well, I say they're normally quite straightforward. One of my other videos, um, the JVC CX5K, that was quite, uh, quite a task to get apart, but um, hopefully this one uh, looks as though it's just this, uh, this outer case. These screws are all looking the same size so far. And one more there. Doesn't look as if there's any screws inside here holding it together. It still feels as though it's uh, attached quite well though. Let's let me just try with this prize tool gently. So it was the battery lid that needed to be removed. Um, I'll just show you here. So the, the plastic plastic lid slides along this metal piece and there's a little clip at the end. So you just need to, this little clip just needs to be lifted up slightly 
and then the uh, the plastic lid here just slides off and that was that was what was stopping the case coming apart so you need to push that back in now out of the way and then the uh, the case will come off so that's what was stopping it okay and now we've got a good view of that belt so it is still intact it hasn't uh, hasn't deteriorated too much but i uh it must be slipping because as like i said i could hear this motor turning but i couldn't uh couldn't see these wheels turning doesn't look too bad though Let's have a look at this battery compartment first. So, if we look at the end, we can see the two terminals that um, are powered when the external battery terminal is on. Uh, battery pack, rather. So, one and a half volts here, the player works, but one and a half volts here on the battery does not work. The battery terminal is looking good condition. I can't see any corrosion on there. Okay, so this terminal, if we follow it, this terminal goes onto the ground plane of the circuit. And I can see that all of that ground plane comes back to this negative terminal here. So there's no extra circuitry between this terminal and the battery terminal. No fuses or anything. And it's the same for the positive actually. So this door here, this is um this makes contact with the battery at the at the positive end. So if I just show you the battery there, that sits in here. And that makes contact with the with the positive end. Now that is the same piece of metal here as that positive terminal. So I can't see a reason why. These terminals work, but battery terminals don't. So I'll just push that onto the battery now and press the play button. Ah, the play button, let's have a look. So there's the buttons, they match up with these switches here. So if I press that and press the play button. Nope, nothing there. Okay, let's uh, just bring the multimeter in and we'll just check the continuity between these terminals and the uh, external battery pack terminals. Actually, we don't need the meter in shot. I'm just going to set it to continuity. So when the probes are touched, you get a we'll get a beep if there's a continuous circuit there. So let's try the positive door here and the positive terminal. Oh, nothing. It looks as though parts of this are working and parts of it. Maybe there is a slight corrosion on this. I think it's just a bad contact. Let's just check the negative. That's fine. Maybe it has something to do with the, the hinge on this door, because obviously the electrical contact's got to go through this hinge as well. I can see a slight bit of green on there. I don't know whether you can see that. I think this has had a, a, leaky, a leaky battery at some point. I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll get some isopropyl alcohol and I'll just clean this up, and then I'll uh, I'll come back and we'll see if that's sorted the power supply problem. So the issue appears to be the actual hinge itself. I've taken a picture on my phone so you can see it in a little more detail. So. 
this is the uh, the hinge here and as you can see there's some green corrosion here from as I said I think it must have had a leaky battery at some point on this hinge and it's does it's not making electrical contact properly between this door hinge here and um, the the other contact in the phone so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good clean uh, might even unscrew this because it, it just unscrews this um, this whole assembly here and I might uh, just soak it in some alcohol for a bit um, just see if I can clean off that corrosion so uh, I will do that and then I will come back okay so I discovered what the problem was with this the door includes a little um, sort of swipe piece of metal that, that swipes uh, you might just be able to see it let me um, point it out this camera is not set up for macro so um, it might be a little bit difficult to see but so I open and close the door you see this little the end of the door here has this little metal piece but what happens is when this closes that metal makes contact with the top of this metal here so it, it, it's not it's not making a contact now and then when you close the door it does make a contact now what had happened was this metal wasn't making a tight connection to the top so as I as I closed the door it was still um, not making contact with the metal so all I've done is just bent that metal up slightly so if you're having an issue with the battery not making a contact then it could be this little um, like I said it's difficult to see on this camera but that, that little bit of metal there you just need to bend it upwards and uh, and you'll feel this this making like a, a tight I can feel it it's a tighter connection now as that uh, makes contact so if I connect up the meter again when this door's open there's no contact as I close it, I've got contact now. So that's what that was. So let's try a battery in this now. Hopefully we've got power to it now. now this uh, player has um, the buttons marked on the circuit board. Play, stop. Fast forward and rewind. So let's try one of these. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's um, that's fixed the the power issue. Now we still have a problem with the belt. It actually. It's got a tape in now and it is actually working. It looks as though that belt is performing as I'd expect. What I think I will do, I will replace this belt anyway. Um, I have a new one here. I know that uh, it was slipping before when I, uh, when I tried it with the power supply, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace this belt anyway. So uh, we'll do that now. So the path that the belt takes is around this capstan wheel, along around this idler, around the motor, around the second capstan wheel, and back to the start. Now the only thing stopping you taking this belt off straight away is this metal plate here. This is the battery negative terminal. And there's a piece of metal that goes from the terminal down to the base of the machine just inside there so that what needs to happen is this metal needs to be lifted up slightly the belt you can see this metal plate just lifts up on one edge now we don't need to take it all the way off it's soldered on the other end but if we just lift it up enough we should be able to just get this belt underneath so Unhook it from the wheels. And then, might be a little bit fiddly, but just need to lift this up. Get the 
belt from underneath. Now, let's compare this belt with the new one that I have. As I said, this one was slipping when I first tested it. So I expect it to be a little bit larger. Yeah, and you might be able to see there the diameter of this um, older one is, is larger. By much, but it's enough to enough to get it slipping. Okay, so refitted this. You need to slip this underneath that metal plate. So I'll lift it up and just put it underneath. That's it. to try and grab it from the other side. So put that one around the motor. Second capstan wheel. Okay. Now just run the the wheels round a little bit and that will just straighten out the belt if it's been twisted at all. Okay, let's give it a quick test. Okay, looks the same as before to be honest, but I expect that the other belt um, has, uh, has worn. You can see that it was a little bit larger anyway. Okay, so putting this back together should just be a reverse of what we did before. Put the end of the case in with the controls first. That's got to engage with the volume switch and everything else on this end. Make sure that your hold button is engaged with the switch. And that should just press down on the other end. That looks okay. screws back in. There's five screws in the case, they're all the same size so they can go in any position. It's always a good idea not to over tighten the screws, especially on these little stereos that have um, the thin metal cases. If you over tighten them it will distort that metal.
One left. Okay, last thing to do is the battery compartment door. And this plastic, as I said before, it just slides down the plastic channel and the little clip at the end just engages at the, at the end. So as you slide it in, a little click, and that's it. Okay, let's just quick check, make sure it's still working. It's odd that they've got a black window here, the tape is through there. So if it was a clear window, you'd be able to see the tape um, spindles turning. It's the, uh, it's the only one I've seen that actually has a window, but it's it's dark and you can't actually see the tape in it. Don't see the point of that. Let's get some headphones. Vintage music to go with the vintage player. Okay. Well, that's good. That is all repaired now. It looks as though it was just those two faults the power supply and the belt. So, this is back to uh, working condition. So, hope you found this video interesting. Uh, if you like it, give me a like. Thanks for watching.